we're going to show you a practical application of a CT test switch probe. We have a uh, test switch assembly here manufactured by States. We have the probe that's manufactured by them as well. And this probe actually fits into one of the non-shorting CT switches that we open up first and take this probe. It's got metal on both sides of the blade. You take that and insert it into the test switch like that. And now the CT current has to go through the probe and through our ammeter right here as part of the circuit. But it's a, uh, a way of breaking into the circuit or stabbing into the CT circuit without breaking the circuit open. You'll notice that when the probe goes in, both of the metal blades contacts both of the leaves here in the non-shorting switch. So right now the, <clears throat> the ammeter is making contact. And as I gently shove that in, it spreads the two leaves apart and I never break the CT circuit, which of course is very important for reasons of safety. If you open up a CT secondary circuit under load, bad things happen. Uh, smoke, sparks, flame, all that and above. So here I've got my two leads put into the probe. We've double checked the connections here. We've measured continuity through the end of the probe all the way back through our meter to make sure we got good continuity because again, any open circuit in this loop is danger because when you interrupt that CT circuit, it'll try to push whatever current it's doing through an open circuit and create uh, all kinds of chaos. So what we're gonna do now is demonstrate how we can measure the inrush current on an electric motor. This CT system right here is measuring the current going to a load, in this case the load is a two horsepower, 120 volt motor. And uh, under idling conditions, it draws about uh, eight amps or so, eight and a half amps or so. We, the, uh, the CTs we're using right here, I can show you on the diagram, they're 100 to 5 ratio units, but we've actually wrapped five turns of wire through the primary donut hole of the CT, so it ends up being uh, an effective 20 to 5 ratio, or 4 to 1. So this 4 to 1 CT is going to allow us to measure current to the motor at a reduced proportion. Whatever number of amps we read through here, times 4 is going to be our actual motor current. So, Let's set up first with a normal ammeter test. So go ahead and turn the ammeter on to AC amps. Push the backlight button on. All right, then just leave it there, and we're gonna start the motor up and show you how it normally measures current. So here we go, starting the motor. And we're measuring 2.2 amps or so. Remember the CT ratio is four to one. So take that number, multiply by four, and that's the actual motor's current. If we were to load the motor down more, it'd start drawing more current. That's basically how that works, real simple. I'm gonna shut this off again. And the current falls off to nothing. Now what we're gonna do is measure the inrush current of the motor. We're gonna make sure uh, we're able to capture that very peak value. We're gonna use some of the special features in the Fluke 87 meter to do so. So first what we're gonna do is change the range. We're gonna hit the manual range button. Once locks it in, press it one more time switches the range up. The reason we have to do this is the inrush current is so much higher than the normal operating current. If we did not do the step first, it would overrange. And when we're in the min-max mode, it's not able to shift ranges. So we have to pre-range the meter before we go into min-max mode. Now I press the min-max button. That'll capture the minimum maximum values, but we want this to scan very fast to capture that initial inrush. So we hit the peak button. So now we have peak min-max. It's a very, very fast capture. So what we're going to do is leave it in that mode and start the motor up. Twenty-two point four eight amps. Now remember, that's the CT secondary current. What's actually happening is we have four times that amount of current going to the motor. So that little, you know, two horsepower motor drew eighty-eight amps on startup. We're able to capture that peak value here with our meter, reading a proportion of that current through our test probe coming from the CT, the current transformer. And that's a simple demonstration of how we can use a test probe here to do live meter measurements on a system and to do it safely to what's called stab into a CT circuit without ever opening it and incurring a safety hazard.